Okay, guys, this is now part two of our resistive inductive series circuit. And we're going to cover some of the last elements inside of this that are kind of the most important new elements that we haven't seen yet. So the first thing we want to do is realize what VARS is. Now VARS is going to act like P, like across the resistor. The only difference is, is no true power is being created across an inductor in an inductive circuit. So it's referred to as VA reactive. And, or we usually refer that to that as wattless power. But we still can calculate it. Very similar to power across a resistor, we're going to use the quantities in the inductive uh, column, if you will, to solve for VARs. Now, we could pretend that this is P, and if we were to solve for this using Ohm's law formula, we have voltage, current, and resistance. We can use our Ohm's law wheel to solve for, for VARs by just coming over here and saying, hey, I'm going to use any one of these to solve for VARs. Or you can then come over and say, which formula says VARs equals? Well, let's come over here. I've got four of them. VARs equals voltage dropped across the inductor times current dropped across the inductor. Or it's very similar to saying P equals E times I. Watch. P equals E times I. Well, let me come over to my Ohm's Law wheel. P equals E times I. I could take it a step further. I could say P equals E squared divided by R. Come back over here. P equals E squared divided by R. Remember, R now being inductive reactants. And then I could certainly uh, carry on and, and do this again. We got all these uh, other uh, formulas that we could use. I just want to make you aware that depending on which one you feel like using, it really doesn't matter. You're going to come up with the same quantity. So let's do VARS is going to be E times I. Well, my E is 192 and my I is 4.8. So let's put that in the calculator using that formula. 192, which is my E. So I'm using volts times amps. VA is synonymous with power or watts, where in this case, across the inductor, it would be VARs. So 192 times 4.8 equals 921.6. 921.6. Okay, that's done. That's done. Now we've got one last item here. Remember, in the total column, VA stands for volt amps. Volt amps is synonymous with P. So I can use any one of these if I want to to solve for VA. Uh, we can use Ohm's law over here, or you can look for a formula that says VA equals. Let's go over and do that again. Let's find my VA formulas right up there in red. VA, well, this is like saying P equals E times I across the total column. We can do this with Ohm's law all day too. This is really E squared divided by R. This is really I squared times R, just like what's on the Ohm's law wheel. You need to see that relationship. So let's just pick one. We'll come back over here to my calculator and we'll say, how are we gonna solve for VA? Well, why don't we just do E times I? 240 times 4.8. equals 1152 so we have 1152 watts and now we got to solve for these last two items well power factor is going to always be represented in a percentage which means 
within 100. So we have to have that number within 100 or multiply our decimal number times 100. So let's look at what a power factor equals formula looks like because it's not on the Ohm's Law wheel. Power factor equals, well, come over to your sheets, which you have in front of you, and find all your power factor formulas. I've organized them in this video. They might be scattered on your sheets. I could pick any one of these to solve for power factor. Well, I'm going to pick the top one. Power factor equals resistance divided by impedance. Well, my resistance across the resistor is 30, and I'm going to divide that by my circuit impedance, which is 50. 30 divided by 50 equals 0.6. I want to stress, when we're dealing with power factor, we just did 30 divided by 50, which is really R divided by Z, and we came up with 0.6. But because it's a power factor, we can't live with 0.6. We have to multiply it times 100, and then we will end up with 60%. That's your answer. That's what you got to do. So this answer over here is going to be a 60% power factor. Now, this number becomes important for angle theta. And I'll explain to you what that is. And of course, that's in your homework. So I'm not going to go too deep into it. But angle theta, let's find this on the calculator. It's going to be your cosine function. And I want to show you what it means in your book. So in your page of chapter 13, when you go to page 215, you start to see what angle theta is. And it says this, since the circuit contains both resistance and inductance, the current is lagging the voltage by 53.13 degrees. That's what angle theta is, but let's put it in the calculator. So in order to do this in the calculator, you're going to take your decimal value of your power factor, which is 0.6. But before you take that number, you have to hit second function, cosine. Now you put in your decimal number power factor, which was 0.6, and then hit equals. And you're going to end up with 53.13 degrees. So let's write that down because we know that's the correct answer. 53.13 degrees. And what is that exactly telling me? Well, it's in simplest terms. Because it contains both resistance and inductance, the current is lagging the voltage by 53 degrees. So if I had to put that sine wave up again, let me put this down so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Here's my sine wave. And if this is... Uh, if I'm looking at this for a second, both resistance and current says the current is lagging the voltage. If this is voltage, that means my current is lagging by 53 degrees. In other words, inductance is a form of resistance. And if you've got an inductor in the circuit with a resistor, you're going to be lagging the voltage. And in this case, based on these numbers, we are lagging that voltage by 53 degrees, which means it clearly shows an opposition to current flow because the inductor is putting EMF or counter EMF or counter voltage back into the source. Now, I hinted to this earlier. We can carry current across the circuit because current is the same in a series circuit. But voltage appears to not be additive. But the thing is, is we have to look at our ET formulas for a resistive series circuit. ET in this case is 240. I want to in my heart add these two up and it become the total, 144 and 192, but it won't. So let's look at our ET formula. Notice Voltage, total voltage is additive, but we have to square root the number 
and the values inside that. So, or we can take uh, total current times impedance and get that number. Or we can take VA divided by total current to get that number. So let's verify that 144, the square root of 144 squared plus the square root of 192 equals 240. Let's put it in our calculator. Let's go back. I don't know if you can see this. Second function square. And we know it's going to be 144 squared plus 192 squared equals 240 volts. So it does work. You just have to algebraically rearrange your formula to, to make it jive. And you got to know what you're dealing with. If we want to, we could do the same thing with total current times impedance and we should end up with 240. So our total current is 4.8 times our imp impedance, which is 50, and we still get 240 volts. So however you need to cross-reference yourself, your series rules still apply to a series uh, resistive inductive circuit. I guess in summary, you need to go over this. Uh, your sheets of your formulas aren't laid out like this. I specifically took all the ETs, put them together, the ITs, the Zs. I arranged them in the color code so that it's easier to see and easier to find. Because as we start to really progress in some of these formulas, you're not going to want to be looking. You'll probably walk right by the circuit on your sheet and not see it. Last but not least, Every variation of all those formulas that are over there can be pinned back to the Ohm's Law wheel if you know two important things. P is VA in a pure resistive circuit, it's still power, but across the inductor it's referred to as VAR, so VARS is really synonymous with P. Inductive reactance is synonymous with R. Inductance, well, we need a formula for that. The formula for inductance is L equals inductive reactance over 2 pi F. You need to know what your frequency is in every circuit so you don't screw that up. And last but not least, uh, you know, make sure you have all this written down somewhere so that you can refer to this later. Those are your answers. And angle theta, that's your relationship between voltage and current. 53 degrees is lagged, current lags by 53 degrees in this circuit. See you at the next video.